Hi, I'm Simon from Ridge Monkey and I'm here today to show you how to make a tasty little dessert using one of our compact pans. These aren't just for toasties, they are for everything. What we got? We've got some pudding in a mug. So basically these little cake mixes, you buy, you mix with a bit of milk, put them into a mug, put them in the microwave, 30 seconds later you've got a cake. Well we're not going to do that with a microwave today, we're going to mix a couple of these with our milk. We're going to put these Jaffa cake nibbles in there. Now you don't just have to use these Jaffa cakes, you could use anything you like, Maltesers, cut up Mars bars, Snickers, Kit Kats, anything that you like that could go in there. Even those horrible strawberry centres that you left that Christmas from the tin of roses. Uh, we're going to mix it with milk, put it into our pan and just cook it off. So first of all, let's get these opened up and put it in. Now these are a really simple little thing to carry with you. As you can see, you know, they're already portioned. I'm doing this because there's a couple of us fishing, but you might only want to use one in there. That's perfectly fine. They cost about 50 pence each from your local supermarket. We mix with about 60 ml of milk. So for the two of them, that's 120 ml. Now there's 568 ml in a pint. So roughly looking at it, it's five fingers. You don't have to measure it. I'm just going to take it down to where the bottom of my thumb is. There we go, that's all you need. So you don't need to measure it out precisely. And we're just gonna mix that round. There you go, so using the fork, mix that. You wanna make sure that all of that powder's mixed thoroughly, you haven't got any big lumps in there, which is really, really easy to do. So I don't know if you can see that, but that mix there, lovely. It's all mixed thoroughly through. We haven't got any of that powder left combined with that milk. So the next thing to do is we're going to add these Jaffa cakes in. Gonna move that milk out the way. As you can see the mugs are a perfect size for mixing all of it. We've got an entire packet of these Jaffa cake nibbles in there. We've got two of the sachets and the milk. Perfect for mixing. Now I've preheated my pan. It's on a really really low heat. I've got that one side done. We're gonna be using that just like an oven, as I stated. So the top's really warm there. And we are just gonna pour this into the bottom now. So that's gonna to start to cook. That's gonna spread over our entire pan, but also that's gonna give it enough room to rise up as it cooks. So we're just gonna put that back on. Turn that down a touch more, and there we go. Right, so we've just turned that stove down, it's on really, really low, and that's going to allow that to start cooking. Now what we are going to do, we are going to flip it over, but the heat from the top, I preheated that top, I turned it over, so that's going to act like an oven and start getting that heat from the top as well. When you're cooking in an oven, obviously, the heat is all around. When you're cooking in a pan, it's just underneath. So by preheating the tops of these pans, you can create that oven effect that will distribute the heat all the way around it and help it to actually start that cooking process and get that cake to rise. So we'll come back to this in a couple of minutes and see how it's getting on. Right, so what you need to do is just keep an eye on these as you're cooking them, you'll see them coming through. You really don't want that too high, okay? So if it's high, the sugar in the chocolate, it's gonna caramelize, it's gonna start to burn, okay? So you just want these nicely cooking through, really, really low heat, and that cake's gonna start to rise. What you want to do, just keep an eye on these. Now you will get a little bit of discoloration on these cakes purely for the fact that you've got that heat source in the circle underneath the pan. If you're thinking if you're cooking a cake in an oven, you wouldn't have that because the heat is all around and you've got your cake sat on a shelf with no direct heat contact. So you will get a little bit of discoloration, but that's not going to go the whole way through. Now we're looking at that, that cake's already starting to rise. We're going to flip that over. Now that has just caught there ever so slightly, but once again, as that cooks, that will release itself. That's just the bits of chocolate clinging to the surface. But you can see that that cake's already rising. So we'll come back to this in a couple of minutes, take a look and see how we're getting on. So the cake's been sat there now for a minute, no heat underneath it, just literally letting itself finish cooking through. We don't want to actually cook it too much because then it's going to be really dry and crumbly. Nice little bit of moisture in the side, even with a little molten center that you get as in as if you were having a chocolate brownie. So let's have a look. We'll take this off. Perfect. Look at that. Now that cake there is lovely. It's cooked across the top. 
So let's cut this open. But look at that, really, really soft in the center. We've got those nice little bits from the Jaffa cake. We've got the crunch in there. We've got that chocolate. We're gonna have that orange flavor. Really, really simple to cook on the bank in no time at all, using a couple of ingredients that you can actually keep in your food bag so they're always there. What could be better on a nice afternoon than a piece of this, a nice mug of tea, and some friends to have a chat with?